Um, but I think this is this might be an interesting moment just to step back and say something about how it's possible for people in the Free State Project, on the one hand, to be electing people to the state legislature and trying to influence the political direction of the state, when on the other hand, you have some people who just don't really have any interest in that, but yet they still want to contribute something to the Free State Project. So what does that look like? Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of community building. Yeah, you know, I mean, this, New Hampshire is a very political state, so everyone's a little involved, even if it is literally like you're a card carrying anarchist, you'll still go hold signs for like your friend, because one of your friends is a free stater and they're running for something. And uh, in the community itself, what we see a lot of is obviously uh, business building. There's been a lot of crypto and we've taken some knocks, you know, the, the federal government is coming after crypto really hard. It's, it's, it's actually really sad to see, you know, as someone who got in super early, it's shocking to me to be like, wow, I'm in a country that is going to miss the boat. I mean, Nigeria doesn't care. You know, El Salvador doesn't care. There are all these countries. So anyway, so we have like crypto people. Uh, there's a lot of homesteading. People are just, I mean, I jokingly call it the freedom for freedom program now. Lots of, you know, 30 something families coming, having lots of kids. There's a massive homeschooling community. Um, you know, there's two or three, I think, Free staters started charter schools, uh, you know, so so really, I think the best way for people to think about what we're doing is yes, politics is a means to an end, in some ways, right, like you got to play that game as well. And for the most part, free staters run Republican. And so we've built out a really big Liberty caucus here of hundreds of people. Uh, but really, culturally, I think is where we're going to win the game. Like we have come as reinforcements for people who believe in the live free or die state. And now it's just, you know, how we say politics is downstream from culture. We're creating the culture, right? Like people are opening bars and restaurants and doing shows and having art exhibitions and roasting coffee and people are coming and they're actually bringing their passion or their dream and then making it happen because you actually also have built-in customers. So by way of example, I just did my real estate exam. I was like, hmm, I got to do something. I've been bringing all these people here forever, right? So I think we're seeing that sort of, yes, politics is a part of it, but a much stronger part is just really the network we're building out. Um, I, I think that answered your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, a smart realtor would have a special arrangement with uh, everybody, the local handyman, um, the every single person you would need, every company you need to get up and running. Uh, you'd have some special relationship with them when you refer people to that person. And in particular, in the Free State Project, you could refer people. I'm sure we have people who do all those things. I'm sure we have electricians and carpenters and anybody you would need. And so you could not only use a, a free stater for your real estate agent, but for everything. Right. And absolutely. And that exists. There's an app called freestate.app. It lists all free staters in the state who want to be on there, who do everything from construction to home cleaning to chicken care, dog walking, whatever. So, so it really is, you know, I, I, I've been trying to come up with a phrase and I guess the, the beginning of the, the end of the beginning is kind of where I'm I'm at, right? Like it's been 20 years. I've been here for 14, 15 years. But really what's now happening is it's like real. It's, it's beyond anyone's expectation. There is, I believe we are truly going to have a yellow, a gold and black state, a yellow and black state. Uh, it's uh, it's going to take time. It might not be called that big L libertarian to start with, but the flavor is going to be there. And really the kinds of people we need to draw here and bring here are the dreamers, the builders, the visionaries. Here's what I wanna see. I wanna see people who come in the energy space. We have a nuclear reactor in New Hampshire. We have a license to build another reactor by 2030. If we can get the right investments in the state, we can, I mean, we already, Seabrook already supplies 25% of the Eastern Seaboard's energy. So if New Hampshire can become energy independent on the Eastern Seaboard, now we're cooking with some gas, right? I'm yeah, sure that's yeah. illegal too now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
you know, so energy, crypto, um, we really, really, really need blue collar workers. We need plumbers and electricians and construction. There's a housing shortage here. The unemployment rate in New Hampshire, I think is 2.7%. So like, if you are thinking about what's next, please come check us out. People can look at fsp.org or come to Porkfest, there are still tickets. And you know, maybe for folks who are listening, you know, if you live in New Hampshire, just come up for some of the speakers you like. The tickets are ridiculously cheap. I mean, I've had a fight with every organizer since my time. My time, my first one was in 2009 that I organized and the tickets were $25, the original tickets. Now they're up to 75 and I'm like, I feel like for how popular we got, there's gotta be a chart that tells us we should be charging more. But oh, <laughs> yes. considering what you get, I mean, it is, it, it, yeah, it, it, there are, people are almost stealing from you with, with, uh, with, that, with that deal. Let me say a couple of things that I, I forgot to mention when I was talking about my own experience. The, the key reason that I decided to go in 2020, and then I, I also came the following year, was that it was the COVID craziness, and you guys still had the you-know-whats to carry forward and do it. And I was so impressed that there was an event that wasn't canceled that I thought, I just have to be there. I have to be part of this. And I, I did not regret it at all. had such a wonderful time. Um, so that makes me think of two things. The first thing is more trivial than the second. The first is my experience there is there's there are a lot of people who are going to uh, feed you with all interesting different kinds of food. But generally during the day, I found that at night when I'm really hungry, and I'm I'm a late night guy, and a lot of people there are late night people, but the, the food late at night was slim picking. So if you're an <laughs> entrepreneur, uh, sell food at night at Pork Fest, and you will clean up. Cool. We're desperate for food at night. Okay, mm -hmm. so all you wake up five in the morning, people, you're wonderful, you can serve breakfast. But we need the you know, going to bed at five o'clock in the morning, people to be making us food. That's the that's one thing. But the, the more serious thing is now imagine, I mean, New Hampshire is in New England and New England by and large is blue. And during COVID, New England was hopeless. But imagine though, if you lived in New Hampshire, regardless of what the government did, you know that you have a network of people all over that state who aren't going for this people who do want you to come over to their houses, who do want to have normal human interaction. Wouldn't living there have been a vast improvement over living in some of these backwater blue cities or blue states where you were stuck in your house for nine months? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you know, it's funny. Uh, I have a very close friend, <coughs> excuse me, who was just out here a couple of days ago because so we stopped talking to each other during COVID. We know each other from San Francisco and then New York. She's, I've known her since I've lived in America. Uh, we've come a long way together. We stopped talking to each other because the last thing she said to me before I blogged about it and just stopped talking to her was, well, Carla, I believe in science. Oh. And that made my head explode from someone who knows me, like who knows I'm reading the underlying studies footnotes before I form opinions, right? So anyway, so we were just like, we were donezo with each other. And then she came out and I'm very interested in this thing about we have to heal things, right? Like uh, forgiveness is actually a real thing and it's a present you give yourself. It really has very little to do with the other person, although there is that, right? And I was just like, this person adds value in my life. I love her for artsy things and whatever. Can I get over this? Yes, she was wrong. You know, I, I didn't lean into a lot of the nastiness where you could be like, well, that person just had, you know, oh, you know, they tell the stories. This person just had a heart attack. Oh, this person has turbo cancer. Oh, this person. And I kept my mouth shut the whole time. I think I won some kind of award. Um, but yes, she, even she, who was in New York at the same time, they have left New York. They bought her in upstate New York, right? So they wanted to be closer to the city and stuff. But even she, 
I believe the science, Carla, was like, uh, okay, I got to get out of the city because this was hell, right? Like they were really locked down in New York City. And we didn't have that experience at all in New Hampshire. We just la, la, la on with our lives, right? I mean, we got some flack for doing the Pork Fest event, but nothing bad happened. Uh, it was an issue of liberties. In the end, the issue is, they don't, even if it spread COVID from nose to tail and every single person who went, they don't have the right to tell you what to do with your body or to lock you down. We are born free. And, you know, and so it was a no brainer for me. And I was really, really grateful that you came. I think that was fantastic. And, um, and that's sort of the spirit. And I think that's what we're trying to build in the free state is this sense of people who, who, who fundamentally actually understand the issues, right? Like it's it's freedom, but it's also personal responsibility. Those two things have to go together and it has to, uh, you know, and property rights. And so if we can make those things work, I think we have a good chance to do something really, really, really exciting here. Well, the website, once again, first of all, for uh, the Free State Project overall is fsp.org. And then for Porkfest, that's Porkfest with a C, porkfest.com. Check that out. I actually checked it out just before we uh, came on here. And that site is great. It's beautiful. It's not cluttered. It's not amateurish. It's beautifully laid out. You immediately get everything you need to know about it. Perfect. So check out porkfest.com. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful time. And you get to meet Carla, who's a wonderful person. And I remember, I remember thinking to myself, now, uh, granted, the Dennis is the like the quote unquote organizer, but I'm sure, Carla, you still are carrying some kind of burden related to this. And so, I mean, I'm very thrilled to announce that I have Queen Cool's court this year. So they gave me like a little lounge where I can welcome the VIPs and you know make sure you guys are getting some tea and have a golf cart to drive around. Well, that is great. I, I just land. felt like I thought for somebody who is semi running an event, you and and Dennis did not seem overwhelmed or I can't wait till this is over. Uh, the, the, there was just such a wonderful spirit from everybody. That's great to hear. I mean, you know, we we playfully say it takes a quillage, right? Which sounds slightly commy, but hey, it's a quillage. There's some spike in there. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's hundreds of volunteers. And I think I had said in, in the notes before we started, one of the things that I find so interesting, right, is the, the, the people who are organizing now, someone like Dennis, right, who is doing a phenomenal job because he took the idea of what is it and decentralized it even more. So if you have 100 hubs, you have 10 people at each hub vested in bringing 10 other people. It's, it's almost like a, a, a um, MLM scheme, right? Like you get more and more people to come because you're getting more people to do little bits of it. So we have a sea of volunteers who, who help. And so that makes it a lot easier, uh, but it is a big event. And it's uh, usually by that Sunday, I was laughing because the Fentons want to do this huge event the Sunday of the end of Porkfest at their farm. And it's going to be very fancy with a lot of these politicos, more a fundraiser, more close and one-on-one. And in my head, I was just thinking, I was like, no, who can still do something this Sunday night of after a week? I was like, I don't even have a voice then usually. Oh, uh, but yeah, no, it's 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 a good time. Dennis has done wonderful. Oh, that's what I was gonna say is watching how we navigate different not even dramas, but just things we have to figure out as a community. So 10 or 15 years ago, the fights were things like, oh, are you gonna have on-site security? And it's like, well, yeah, because some people have kids and they wake up at 5 a.m. and some people wanna go to sleep at 5 a.m. And you know, it, it, sometimes it's helpful to have a neutral party navigating that kind of stuff. Oh, we actually, turns out, do need medics because people twist their ankles and, fall in holes and someone gets bonked on the head by the kickball or whatever, right? So then we started to get medical people involved. And then we were like, oh, the facilities break. So now we need infrastructure. So I have to tell you, Porkfest has kind of built its own little uh, government there over the years, but because it's decentralized and everyone owns their area of operations, 
that was really hard. That was something I really had to learn is to trust other people <laughs> is to be like, oh, you can't do it all. You're going to have to be like, this person can handle this and then let them handle it, you know? And, and with Dennis, cause he's more stubborn than I am. He was just like, I'm, I'm taking it. And I was like, mm. and then I was like, ah, what will happen if I just let go? Let's see. And it's been great. So I'm excited. I think it's going to be really fun. Um, I, I don't actually, I have a question for you. So I was thinking if we have all these mucky mucks coming, right? How do we turn it into an opportunity for the free state or for libertarians in New Hampshire? What are the questions that we should be asking all of them that really like forces narratives in the directions that we want to go. So for me, one is, you know, I, I'm a big supporter of Silk Road and Ross Ulbricht. He was the reason Bitcoin even became a thing. He created a marketplace. He tried to reduce the harm from the war on drugs. That guy is a hero. He's going to die in prison if we don't get someone to say they will let him out and give him a pardon and clemency. So that would be one of mine you know, like, hey, would you free Ross Ulbricht? But, you know, maybe it needs to be like Edward Snowden because no one knows who Ross is. But things along that line, do you have thoughts? Yeah, but they, well, first of all, they should know who Ross is and it's disqualifying yes. if they don't. But if you mean like to appeal to an audience outside of Porkfest, that's another, another matter. Uh, you know, I, I there's a bunch you could come up with. I mean, I, I would want to say, Look, I, I've heard people come and tell me about how upset they are that such and such Republican voted for a lot of spending. And I don't even care anymore because I, I know you're lying to me. I know you're not going to do anything about it either. So I, I don't even worry about that issue anymore, you know, because where, where there is no solution, there is no problem. You know, so I've just <laughs> forgotten about it. Nothing's ever going to happen, obviously. So don't come here and tell me that. Right. So I'm going to make I, that one of my balancing things. No yeah. solution, no problem. That's right. Exactly. So what I would say is, um, you know, look, uh, I know what Mitt Romney is going to say to me. And I know what somebody who's posturing as the anti Mitt Romney is going to say to me. But in general, both of those people go to Washington and screw me. So what can you say to me to convince me that you're not just another one of these people? And, hey. and, and I, you know, and I, I've heard all the speeches about how wonderful America is and what it means to you and all that, you know, right. I want to know that you are at least 33% like me in that you're no longer somebody who thinks, you know, these government programs sure do have very sad unintended consequences. I'm past that. If, if they do things that year after year, after year, after year have exactly the same consequences, I don't think they're unintended anymore. I'm not no. giving these people the benefit of the doubt, you know? So uh, so I, I guess maybe I would ask them, do you think the the ruling class in America is stupid or evil? Oh, I want, what's your answer to that? Is it just a, a good one. Do they just need to learn more economics, do you think? Or like, what do you think is going on here? And, oh, and that's a, I would also want to know, what is the end game of the American regime? What are they What are they working toward? I'm, I'm talking about all the, the federal agencies, the mm. bureaucracy, the civil service, the the legal establishment. Um, the, like all of it, like where are they, where are they taking us? What do they want? Do they want what's best for you and me? Uh, if not, what is, what do they want? And I think the answer to that question would be very revealing. That is, yeah, that's really telling. I mean, you know, the subtext, of course, is they're all lining their pockets. That's really what's happening at this stage. I mean, it's hard not to look at American politics and just realize it's turning into a banana republic. The other one I thought of um, as you were speaking is because we both uh, have an interest in sort of independence and nullification and uh, secession even. And we did do, you know, we introduced a bill here last year, CACR 32, that would have, uh, a con have introduced a constitutional amendment to put the question to Granite State voters, do you want to peacefully leave the federal union? Yeah. And of course that freaked people out. And so now everyone's looking, but I thought, oh, maybe there's a way to actually put that issue you know, on the table. Would you support a national divorce? If you support it, what would it look like? How do you feel about maybe a framing technique? So you, you know, you, we can 
not necessarily box them in, but have everyone sort of thinking about it, is there's a real opportunity with nullification. So in New Hampshire, we just started a nullification caucus. So that's a caucus in the state house. It's small still, I think it has under 20 members, but you know, you got to start somewhere. And the idea is much like uh, states did cannabis nullification, we were thinking, well, <clears throat> Could we start to do energy nullification? Like, could you just start to say, we're not going to comply with these ridiculous regies and that kind of stuff? And maybe in the energy sector, but then in other sectors as well, maybe finance, wealth, those kinds of things. So I guess, again, I'm going back to who are we looking for? And I'm like, I want people who are willing to break some stuff to come, <laughs> but then to help build. And so if we can get these people on record, hitting notes or stories about what is important to Granite Staters was sort of an idea and a, 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 so I'm trying to, massage the message towards the things I care about, you know, so, so I was like, oh, okay, maybe we can ask him about, uh, would you, would you, if New Hampshire passed, I, I wouldn't go into the details of CICR 32, but if New Hampshire decided it wanted national divorce, would you send in tanks or something like that? I don't know if it's too like, woo, but uh, maybe that's one. <laughs> well, I, I like the way you think. Um, but you knew that already. So we'll, we'll wrap up again with a, um, a call to action. Check out fsp.org, but more urgently and immediately, Porkfest, Porkfest with a C.com. So thanks so much, Carla, and thanks, everybody. Thanks, Tom.